we will begin an experiment to make protein in a test tube. We will cause a reaction which will synthesize the protein which exists in a living cell. Today we will use the fluorescent protein from the body of a jellyfish which produces light. Before beginning, let's make sure we have everything we need. Two tubes with white caps, one with a green dot on the cap, one with no dot. Two small tubes, one with a green dot on the cap and one without. Two tubes with blue caps. So all together there are six tubes and a dropper. Now we are ready to begin. Take the large tube without the green dot. Tap it so that the powder collects at the bottom. Then remove the cap. Next. Take the small tube without the green dot. Make sure the liquid is at the bottom and then take off the cap. Use the dropper to collect the liquid. Do not squeeze the dropper hard. Just gently squeeze it to obtain the liquid and expel the liquid into the large tube. Shake the tube gently until the powder is dissolved as a cloudy white mixture. This solution can be used to make protein. Next take one of the tubes with the blue caps and remove the cap. Use the dropper to gather the liquid inside. This liquid contains amino acids, the material that produces protein. Please be very careful with the next step because if it isn't done correctly, the experiment will fail. Take the dropper and very gently expel the liquid into the tube with a white solution, being careful not to mix the two. The trick is to hold the large tube at an angle, put the tip of the dropper close to the solution in the tube, and expel the liquid in the dropper very slowly. This way, the dropper liquid will rest on top of the white solution without getting mixed up with it. If you have done it properly, there will be two layers, a white one on the bottom and a clear layer on top. Put the tube back in the rack and put on the cap. This is the control sample. Now we will synthesize fluorescent protein. With the remaining tubes, those with the green dots, we will follow the same procedure. First, take the large tube and tap it so the powder falls to the bottom and then remove the cap. Then, make sure the liquid has settled in the bottom of the small tube with the green dot. Remove the cap and use the dropper to collect the liquid. Expel the liquid in the dropper into the large tube. Shake the tube until the powder dissolves, making a white solution. Use the dropper to collect the liquid in the remaining tube with a blue cap and, as before, very carefully expel the liquid into the large tube so that the two liquids do not mix, creating two layers. The bottom layer will be white. You have completed the same procedures for two experiments, one with the tubes with no dot on the cap 
and one using the tubes with the green dots. However, the results will be different. There are two small tubes, but one of them had the material that contains the blueprint for synthesizing the fluorescent protein. That was added to the tube with the green dot. It was not added to the other tube, so the protein will not be synthesized. Two hours after the experiment, we use a black light to confirm the presence of the fluorescent protein. You will see the solution in the green tube glow in the dark, but the contents of the unmarked tube will not. This proves that it is possible to synthesize the protein that exists in living cells.